Hey guys, it's me, 80 from 144. So today, guys, we're going to do, talk about the top four race in the Premier League. So we're going to talk about the three teams that I think will get the t will battle it out for the top four. And I will give honorable mentions to the likes of Brighton and Brentford. I don't think they're going to be. A, I don't think they'll come. I think they're just going to fall short. These are the three teams that will likely get. One of these three teams will get top four, in my personal opinion. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first team, which we have here is Newcastle. Now, before we look at Newcastle, before we discuss about them, let's look at their fixture schedule. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit for you guys. So, zoom in, right? So, they have Wolves at home. You would expect Newcastle to win, right? Nottingham Forest away. Now, that could actually be tricky because Nottingham Forest this season have been great at home. So, you know, it could potentially be tricky. And they have picked up points against Liverpool and Chelsea and City at home. So, I wouldn't put it past Nottingham to get a draw there. Newcastle versus United is a huge, huge game. That's on April 2nd. Right now, I'd probably say United should win that. West Ham away. Newcastle honestly should win. Brentford away is going to be tricky. I don't know if they can win that. I'll say a draw. Astonville away. That could be tricky. Tottenham at home. That's a tricky one. Everton. Then they have New then they have New Southampton. And then Arsenal. And then Leeds. And then Leicester City. And then Chelsea away. Yeah, like I said, man, there's not a lot of winnable games there. And that's the thing with Newcastle is that you look in their recent form, guys. It's not that great. Two losses and three draws. They haven't won a game since... When was the last time they actually won? Let me go check. The last time they won a game was against... And the Premier League I'm looking at this was January 15th. They didn't even win a single game in February. And for me, you look at Newcastle in particular. Look how good they have been. 35 goals scored. 17 conceded. That's pretty good. But you look at the amount of goals they've scored. Teams like Brighton have scored more than them. Teams like Brentford have scored more than them. That's the issue with this Newcastle team is that as good as they are defensively, their attack isn't that great. And that's my concern with this team is that you can keep all the clean sheets you want. You can keep all the clean sheets you want. But if you if you keep conceding these goals, if you keep losing... I mean, if you keep if you keep getting draws, it's not going to be helpful. And I look at it as a draw as like one point, two points lost then rather than one point gain. And you have to look from that perspective. And you look at other teams around them in the area, the likes of Liverpool, Fulham, Brighton, or in the pecking order. You know, it's it's very very interesting to see what happens here. And I just feel like for me with this team in particular, I really don't know what to say with this Newcastle team. Is that? They're, they're a good team. I'm not saying they're not. It's just that they need to improve on their goal score. And they got to find ways to win games. You know, because like I said before, guys, their next couple of games are very, very crucial, right? Especially um, especially the um, the game of Chelsea away at the final game of the season. That could be a huge game for them. Because you would imagine that Chelsea, they have really probably nothing to really play for at that moment. Or if they do, they're going to, you know, not take it seriously. So... It's going to be very interesting to see what happens, man. And as I said before, they got to start winning games. they got to start winning games. Because like I said before, guys, the, the likes of, you know, Isaac needs to step up. The likes of St. Maximum needs to step up. The likes of Jolington and these kind of players, Callum Wilson, Anthony Gordon, Miguel Almorion, as, as good as he is, he can't do it alone. He needs some other people to help him out. Because like I said, guys, this Newcastle team is good. It's just they need more players than attack, and which is the big issue with this team. Okay. Now we look at Tottenham Hotspur. Probably the most confusing team of the top six. Let's look at Tottenham remaining games. Shall we? So let's ignore the Champions League games. We're not going to even take those into consideration. So they have Nottingham Forest at home. Southampton away. Everton away. Then Brighton away. Then Bournemouth. Then Newcastle. Then Man United. Then Liverpool. And then Crystal Palace. Then Aston Villa. Then Brentford. And Leeds. So Tottenham actually have a lot of winnable games coming up because I would say the first really difficult game they have is probably, I mean, that Brighton at home could be tricky, to be fair. Um, I mean, you would still expect them to win. Probably Newcastle. That Newcastle game is probably their real, real tough game away. And potentially a Brighton game, as I said. So as I said with Tottenham, man, the, the thing is with this team is that I don't know if they're going to win these kind of games. And I have this crazy theory, guys. I have this crazy theory. And you guys may laugh at me in the comment section below, which I may receive. So I want you guys to hear me out. I believe for Tottenham in particular, I believe if they go far in the Champions League, they will not get top four. And logically, that shouldn't make sense. But I just have a feeling they will do it. Because remember the 18 and 19 season where they made the Champions League final? They squeezed top four. In fact, we can actually look at that season right now. 
18 and 19, right? Spurs just got top four by one single point. Yes, I said that right, guys. One single point. Okay? Spurs barely squeezed Champions League that season. Okay? That just shows how Spurs were so focused on the Champions League. And that's why I feel like with the Spurs this season is that I look at this team and that they've been like some Manchester City. They've been like some Tottenham Hotspur. I mean, not Tottenham, sorry. Chelsea, you know. But the thing is, they keep losing to teams like Sheffield United, Wolves, and Leicester City. It's unacceptable. It really is. And I feel like for this um, team in particular, for Tottenham, is that they're going to go put their egg, all eggs in the Champions League basket. Why do I say this? Because they know that they have a better chance to win the Champions League than the Premier League. You know, now if Spurs, let's say, don't get, don't make it far in the Champions League, let's say they go out the round of 16 against Milan on Wednesday, I believe, then Spurs will be like, okay, you know what? We have to go all in for the Premier League to get that top four. And that's what helped them a lot last season is because of the fact they were unable to play their conference league game because of the, the restrictions with their players and everyone, you know, the whole COVID situation. Um, that actually helped them a lot because had they were able to play the conference league, I honestly don't. I honestly believe they may not have gone to top four. I think that whole conference league situation that actually played out in their favor at the end of the day. And I like I said with the Spurs team in particular is that as good as they are, they have to start. Um, they they have to start winning those games that they need to win. Like I said, um, because it's all good and all beating at you know it's all good and all beating Chelsea and beating Man City, but if you can't beat the likes of Wolves. If you can't beat the likes of Leicester City, that's a huge concern. Huge, huge concern. And as I said before, guys, these next couple of games are very winnable, guys. Like Southampton, Alroy, they should be winning that. And Nottingham Forest, I know Nottingham Forest have been good this season, but it's really been at their stadium. Tottenham really should be winning that game, especially at home. You know, the Everton, you know, and like I said with Tottenham, man, it's just, you just don't know what to get with this team. You just don't know what to get this with this team. And it's such an unpredictable team. It's such an unpredictable team. And But the crazy thing is, they still can get top four because right now you look at the game, you look at their form, right? Um, this season, let's look at this season. Sorry, right now, right? Tottenham is at forty-six goals scored, thirty-six goals conceded. Look how many losses! Nine losses. They've actually lost lost most games. Uh, they've lost a lot of games. They've lost more games than Liverpool. They've lost more games than Fulham. They've lost more games than Brighton, which is crazy. Um, even Brentford as well. You know, that is interesting. But you look at the amount of wins they're making. 14 wins, man. That is very, very important to note here. And that, I think, is very, very interesting for uh, Tottenham in particular. Is that they keep getting those wins. They keep getting those um, those Ws. And that's going to be very, very important. So, like I said with Tottenham, man. Can they still remain in the top four consideration? We're going to have to see. Although, they have played two more games more than Newcastle. That should be worth noting. Now, it's time to talk about Liverpool. Liverpool, guys. Liverpool for me is very interesting. Very, very interesting here. Okay. Liverpool for me, because I'm going to say this right now, guys. Liverpool have been the worst of these three teams in particular. Just this season alone. But the worry, weird thing is that Liverpool for me, as bad as they have been, they still, they could still grind out those results. Right? Let's look at their upcoming games for Liverpool. They have Bournemouth. Well, first they have the Man United game, which, you know, as of time recording this video, this is before the Man United game. So let's see what happens that game tomorrow, right? Then they have Bournemouth away. They should be winning that game. Right? Champions League, they can forget about it. Forget the Champions League. They have the Fulham game, which has been postponed. So let's be real, though. I mean, Fulham, Fulham at home is tricky. I mean, you would still expect them to win, right? Man City away is going to be difficult. Then they have Chelsea away, which is going to be difficult. Then Arsenal at home. These three games are very difficult for Liverpool. But afterwards, they got Leeds away, Nottingham Forest, West Ham, the Spurs, then Brentford, then Leicester, then Aston Villa, then Southampton. Guys, if you look at this really carefully, guys, the last really difficult game they really have is probably the uh, the um, the um, Arsenal game at home. Every game afterwards, you would expect them to probably win. Okay, maybe Brentford at home could be tricky. I mean, potentially Spurs, maybe. But most of those games are very winnable for Liverpool. And I think Liverpool is in a much better position than Spurs is that they don't really have the Champions to worry about because they already are pretty much out. You know, like 5-2, it's it's done, right? So for Liverpool, 
they can put all their eggs in the Premier League basket. And the thing with this Liverpool team is that I look at this team is that they don't have to play well to win. They can still grind out those results. In fact, you look at the game, for example, let's look at one of these stats. Let's look at the um the game against um Everton in particular, man. Liverpool two, Everton nil. Right? Like sixty percent possession, forty percent. Fifteen shots, six on target. You know. It wasn't even that good of a win, but they managed to get the win. Maybe that's not a good example. Let's look at the game against Newcastle. I think that's a better game to look at. Newcastle. Look at this right here, guys. Liverpool didn't even score a goal even after having a player sent off. You know, even after um, Nick Pope got sent off. That just shows how Liverpool, for me, they can grind out those results even when they're not playing particularly well. And look at the game against Crystal Palace. They were terrible in that game. They were terrible in that game. Their midfield has been bad. But they managed to get a point. They were not great in that game. They managed to get a point. You know, and that's the important thing with this Liverpool team is that they know how to grind out the results even not at their best. And that's why for me, I believe Liverpool is my favorite. I think Liverpool is a team that I believe will get top four simply because, as I said, they really don't have that many. They really, really can just get those wins. And I look at Liverpool this season at Anfield, they just have been great. And I look at this team in particular. Remember a few seasons ago, everyone was saying that Liverpool wouldn't get top four. Liverpool wouldn't. They had so many injuries. They got top four. They beat Manchester United. They even had Allison score a late goal to put them in this position. And I just feel like for me, Liverpool will barely squeeze Champions League qualifications. So it's going to be very fascinating to see what happens, guys. And I'm really, really interested to see what happens. Because like I said before, guys, you look at Liverpool in particular, man. 39 points, 24 games, two games on hand with Spurs. They could potentially go level with Spurs. And they, if, and they have a superior goal difference, so they'll go ahead as Spurs. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below, guys. Which team is going to get a top four? Because it's a really, really interesting battle. And um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting, guys, to see what happens. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys are new on here, consider that subscribe button. Like this video, enjoy. Comment below your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.